Hi, welcome back to Sunday School. This is our first Sunday that we've had a chance to meet in quite a long time. It'll be virtual for quite a while yet, but that's okay, we'll still have fun together. Do you like to garden? If you do, what plants do you like to see grow? And if you don't like to do the gardening, what plants do you like to see and smell? I love flowers, any colorful flowers that smell good, I just love. But gardens are a lot of work. I know this one takes so much time and energy, and sometimes I just don't have that much time to work out here, as you can probably tell. I've just gotten back from vacation, so it hasn't had a lot of work done in a long time. It's growing a little too much. Um, but what do gardens need? Water, sunlight, and somebody to care for them. Isn't that a lot like taking care of each other? Well, today's Bible story is about a garden. I'm going to go back inside my house and get my Bible. I'm going to pause this video now and give you a chance to go get your Bible too. I'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm glad you came back. My name is Terry Heckroth. I am the director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries at Creator Lutheran Church. I'm so glad you came to Sunday School. This is what it's going to look like for the next few months, at least anyway, before we can meet in person in the building. Um, but for now, we'll do video chats and maybe some Zoom calls, and I will send you craft ideas um, and links to music. So for today, I thought we could start out our Sunday school by looking at the Bible. Uh, did you have a chance to go get your Bible? I hope you did. I did. This is my new Bible. I love my new Bible. Uh, this one was written specifically for children. It's really easy to read and it has illustrations for different stories and explanations. So it's a great Bible for kids. If you don't have a Bible right now, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You can follow along with me today and just listen. Um, but we will be handing out Bibles in the month of October. We will have a Bible presentation Sunday. And if you aren't going to make it into in-person worship that day, that's okay. We will deliver them or you can pick them up at the church. But let's get started. I thought it would be fun to do a scavenger hunt for inside our Bible. So first of all, why don't we open it up to the pre pretty early on and look at the table of contents. This is very near the beginning of the book. It usually is in a book. If you're having a hard time finding it, you might want to ask one of your parents or older siblings to help you with that. But there's a lot you can learn from the table of contents. This lists all the books of the Bible. Books in the Bible? Did I say that right? How many books is this? Doesn't it look just like one book? Actually, this is a collection of many books. This is a collection of 66 different books. 66, that's a lot of books crammed into one book, isn't it? So in our table of contents, maybe we can learn some things. Like if you notice, the Bible is divided into two big groups. One is called the Old Testament, and the next one is called the New Testament. The Old Testament is back way back, and that's where we're going to get our first story about the creation of our world. And the New Testament is more about Jesus and his life. First of all, let's see, the Old Testament, can you count how many books the Old Testament has in it? If you'd like to pause the video and count, that might help. Good. I counted 39, did you? 39 books in the Old Testament. How about the New Testament? How many books are there in the New Testament? Did you get 27? Good, right answer. Now, if you take your Bible like this and open it up to the very middle, what book do you see? Psalms, right? The Psalm, book of Psalms is right in the middle of your Bible. Good. Do you know how many books are named after a specific person? Why don't you look, try and count that? You can always pause the video, take more time. 
That's right, there's 41 books that are named after a specific person. Of those 41, how many are women? That's right, two. Can you name them? Ruth and Esther. Good job. Now, how, which book of the Bible has the most chapters? That might be hard to tell from the uh, book table of contents, but maybe you could just skim through. Find the book that has the most chapters. That's right, the book of Psalms has 150 chapters. Those are, a lot of them are songs or poems. Um, and the Old Testament is divided into many sections also. And the first section is called the Torah. And those include the books Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. What's the next book after that, after the Torah? Which would be the sixth book? Joshua, good. What is the shortest book in the Bible according to verses, just verses? That is 2 John. Now there are five books in the Bible that only have one chapter. That's pretty short too. As you can see, the Bible is a collection of 66 different books telling different parts of God's story, but they all have one thing in common, and that is that they all tell the story of God's love and relationship with God's people. Let's get started with our Bible story for today. Our Bible story tells us about creation, about how God first created the earth, and then, he create, then God created humans, and then cause things to grow. God placed the humans in the garden to take care of it and to cultivate it. That means help things to, to be healthy and grow well. We are responsible to care for all that we see, all of God's creation, everything around us. Have you ever noticed the things that are growing around your house? Do you have beautiful gardens and plants that grow around your house? If you would like to take a walk around your house and go just notice the things that are growing, you can pause the video now and come back. Our story today is about creation, about how God created the world and everything in it. I'm going to start by, first of all, I have an idea. I think this is going to be fun. If you would like to choose a character in the story and act out that story as I'm reading, it might be kind of fun for you. So you have your choice. You can be God, or you could be the human, or you could be the snake, or maybe you could be the trees in the garden. Okay, you ready? I am taking this story from the book of Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible, in the second chapter, chapter 2. On the day the Lord God made earth and sky, before any wild plants appeared in the earth, and before any field crops grew, because the Lord God hadn't yet sent rain on the earth, and there was still no human being to farm the fertile land, though a stream rose from the earth and watered all of the fertile land, the Lord God formed the human from the topsoil of the fertile land, and blew, brew, sorry, blew life's breath into his nostrils, and the human came to life. Now we're going to skip a little bit here and continue. The Lord God took the human and settled him into the Garden of Eden to farm it and take care of it. The Lord God commanded the human, eat your fill from all the garden's trees, but do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because on the day you eat from that tree, you will die. Yikes, that was pretty clear, wasn't it? Very clear instructions. And then we're going to skip a little bit. Um, in the meantime, God does make a second human being so that the first human won't be alone. So now there's two humans. 
And I remember, I know you probably remember this from other stories you've heard, Adam and Eve. Now, the snake was the most intelligent of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, the snake said to the woman, did God really say that you shouldn't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, we may eat the fruit of the garden's trees, but not the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. God said, don't eat from it and don't touch it or you will die. The snake said to the woman, you won't die. God knows that on that day you eat from it, you will see clearly and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was beautiful with delicious food and that the tree would provide wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Then they both saw clearly and knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and they made garments for themselves. If you acted out some of that story, good job. Thanks for doing that. I hope it was fun. So when did God create the first human? That's right, after the heavens and earth were created, but before anything began growing. Why did God put the human in the garden? That's right, to take care of it. What did the snake say to the woman? Remember, he said, God didn't really mean to, for you to not eat that. He tried to be sneaky with her and he said, God just is jealous. He just doesn't want you to know more than he does. So the woman believed the snake. Why do you think the snake started that conversation? I don't know the answer to that. I really don't know. Um, what did the man and woman do when they heard the Lord coming? They hid. They realized they were naked and they put fig leaves, big leaves on them. How do you think uh, why do you think they hid? Or why do you think they tried to hide from God? Maybe they were embarrassed that they knew they had done the wrong thing. Have you ever done something that your parents told you not to do? Were you a little embarrassed and tried to hide from your parents? It's kind of hard to hide from parents. It's also hard to hide from God. God always knows where we are. So I don't think that worked with the first humans. How do you think their actions changed their relationship with God? That's a pretty tough question. Um, maybe, maybe the trust was broken when you disobey your parents. Maybe you're mad, maybe your parents are mad. Maybe there's anger and maybe a lack of trust there after that. It does tend to change a relationship for a little while, doesn't it? How did you feel about playing the character that you chose to play? Was it fun being a snake? Was it scary being the first humans? Was it frustrating being God? I can imagine. God created humans so that they could be in relationship with each other and with God. But humans don't always trust God. I know we all fail sometimes to trust God completely. Sometimes we listen to other voices like the humans in the garden did. The good news is that God always, always gives us more chances, more chances to build a relationship instead of breaking it, breaking trust. And we get to renew our promise and God renews God's promise. This year, we're going to hear lots of stories about God's promises and, and God's people making promises to God. So I hope you continue to join us in Sunday School every Sunday. We'll try and do this. We will have maybe guest speakers and some um, maybe young adults come and read the story sometimes too. I hope you have a chance to sing along with the two songs that um, I have sent the links to. 
and I have a craft ready for you too. It's a fun craft and maybe you could um, work with different ideas. It's a big cloud that says um, God made everything or something like that and then you can hang things from it. You could hang all the things that God has made. You could list trees and clouds and flowers and people or I was thinking it would be fun to hang pictures from it. Go outside and take pictures and print them out and hang them from your big cloud that says God made everything. I think that would be cute, but use your imagination, um, work with it however you would like to. And I have had a lot of fun. If you could join me in a final prayer, that would be great. Loving God, thank you for the amazing glory of your creation. Thank you for creating us to care for the earth and to care for each other. We are sorry, so sorry for the times we have broken trust with you or each other. Please restore our relationships and make us whole again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we ask for blessings on all of your plants and your gardens and your life right now. Um, we are thinking about you and praying for you always. Bye.